Hey YouTube, Mark from Advanced Electronic. Just want to go over uh, what my latest project is. Uh, I've been trying to uh, work on a video figuring out how the Don Smith device works. And I had a, uh, a toss up in uh, information regarding its uh, L2 coils, which are obviously in parallel uh, with the regard of Don Systems having the coils wound in reverse on one side and uh, you know clockwise on one side counterclockwise on the other um, to kind of coincide with his uh, his online uh, PDF the PDF shows direction uh, of uh, flow one for amperage one for voltage which I do not believe has anything to do with direction of the winding I think that uh, direction or directional energetic direction goes in the opposite manner for you know you know when it uh, concerns magnetic versus electric um, there's that fine line between electromagnetic and I believe uh, one direction the spin is one direction for voltage one direction for amperage is basically what he's trying to show with the uh, block wall in this area over here so what I did was I wound a Tesla coil it's a bi-directional Tesla coil um, one coil one way one coil the other way center open you know the two leads in in the middle so we can get that uh, partnered coil effect that I uh, showed in my other video which I did with uh, low voltage this one is also going to be proven with low voltage and tuned now the most important thing that I have to discuss when we create these coils uh, everything has to be identical, of, cor of course, except for direction of the windings. So when we're building these, we can't just say, hey, we're going to just do uh, 500 uh, turns here and do whatever we want up top. They have to be the same, same type of wire. And then when you're done, you have to test them and make sure that the, uh, I mean, we're testing with a, an ohmmeter for resistance, but um, I don't have an impedance meter to test while this thing is live, so... I'm going to rely on the ohmmeter to make sure that we have the same resistance on each coil. In my case, it ends up being uh, 19 between 19.3 ohms and 19.4 ohms is the closest that I can get. They both jump both coils from 19.3 to 19.4. So you would have to determine, if you don't count the windings, the distance in length and the diameter to calculate how many windings that you do have, which I haven't done yet. I have three and a quarter inches in length of each coil. They measure both the same resistance and they're both the same size wires in opposite directions. Now my thought here was, okay, now how do you get that type of performance on the opposite coil if the primary coil goes in one direction? Well, my what I'm going to do is I'm going to be building a coil that goes in both directions, starts off with a center tap. One goes to one way, one direction, one goes to the other. And I'm going to do them in opposition to the coils, to the turns on each side. So if this is clockwise and this is counterclockwise, I'm going to oppose my turn. It's going to be counterclockwise aiming towards this coil and clockwise aiming towards this coil. The positive output from the NST is going to be coming towards the center tap and the negative is going to be grounded so basically what's going to happen is these two will be our hot output and these will be grounded on the secondary side or we could try it the opposite way it doesn't really matter um, I've, I'm finding that if we take and we put an Avramenko plug on this side here then um, We'll be able to get both polarities out of the uh, uh, system, provided we put a sine wave to the input. So the only way to put a sine wave on there is, with that high voltage is to either have enough impedance in the uh, primary coil so we don't need an arc gap. The arc gap is eliminating a short circuit. With high voltage, you need quite a few turns to not have a short circuit unless you have a very high frequency. So a one turn primary would be indicative of a frequency that needs to be in the megahertz range so that short doesn't happen and people are saying how do you get a short circuit out of this well it's very simple if you take a, a low frequency circuit and you put one winding on there plug it into the wall it's going to blow the circuit breaker 
Um, that's basically what we're getting at here. With radiant energy, it just either has radiant energy or it doesn't. The radiant energy doesn't cause a short circuit and an explosion. Um, doesn't use a lot of uh, energy to create that pulse from back EMF of a coil like a relay. So we can use, uh, you know, a 15th of an amp at uh, 12 volts to create that back EMF and drive it into the coil. Just as long as it's resonant, it'll come out of the other side. They just need to communicate with one another. So this is going to be my first test when I'm done uh, getting the circuit together to see what kind of an output I have. So I'm going to use the basic Tesla uh, uh, publishings that I see online of how to measure, tune, and obtain resonance for both the driver and the coil. And then from here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try to uh, do what Don Smith did and add the variability. Nobody online is adding anything to vary these circuits. In Don's patents uh, applications, he's had variable resistors on the uh, output, variable capacitors, and uh, you know uh, RC circuits, as as he did with the um, his proof of concept, with which was basically a, a small Tesla coil having a bunch of other receivers next to it as many receivers as he wanted or as many as you can fit in that area will output the same input without driving the input up according to Don. So I have seen this happen in many of my other uh, circuits and experiments where the input amperage goes down as we add a load to it. So I'm not saying it's going to happen with this but I'm pretty confident it will and we'll end up with some free energy hopefully enough to actually loop the circuit. And once I get that done, then uh, we're going to go on to bigger and better things to create more power or just uh, get some high voltage into this and see what happens. But we're going to start this off with low voltage, see if we can get um, some sort of an output. And if I can get it, then, you know, why not just uh, make it bigger and stronger? So we're going to try with the fine wire first. And um, I have a whole bunch of uh, different coils and whatnot. We've got some Finnegan coils here that are used uh, for... Um, some uh, other machines, um, some that are already self, you know, resonant coils. This one has a the uh, center tap primary. This one has a single primary, and I'm finding that this is these are both in the megahertz range. Actually, this high kilohertz range. This is uh, megahertz, and I know that we can use these frequencies to resonate with a multiple of that. I think what's going on and the reason why a lot of people don't get these Don Smith circuits to work is because that quarter wavelength from the primary to the secondary has to also be in combination a multiplier of the coils themselves. So say we had 10 turns in the primary, those secondaries have to be a multiple of 10. Not only for the length of the wire, but for the amount of turns. So we have to use that into uh take that into consideration when we're trying to figure out what the voltage has to be so if we have 10 turns in and 100 turns out we have a, a, a 1 to 10 ratio so we put 9,000 volts in we have 10 times that coming out per coil so that would be 90,000 volts on the other side and that's just way too much so uh, all of our things capacitors and whatnot that we need to use on the other side will actually be uh, very difficult to find or very expensive so um, that's why I'm going to try to do this with low voltage and see if we can actually get that without having that ionic level or uh, the ability to transfer ions with high voltage I, I don't think it'll work without high voltage but we're going to try it anyway and see if we get any gains um, as I did with my partnered coil system so for those of you who've been wondering where I've been I've been extremely sick um, with uh, pneumonia and I haven't been able to do anything throughout the holidays so here we are January 2nd and um, I'm starting to feel a little bit better so uh, hopefully I'll be able to uh, get something done anyway uh, if you guys have any questions uh, go ahead and post them I'll try to get to you we have I still have thousands of emails that I haven't in answered and it's been quite a mission to to do so a lot of people have questions and I just can't I don't have the time to, to answer them all, so please uh, uh, have a little bit of patience. I will try to get to you and answer your questions. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching.